the main five identity in access management now identity in access management is again important domain highly testable a lot of concepts are tested there and uh, it is easy a lot of things that we would see in this domain we have already covered in domain one or domain two so it is going to be a quick revision for them for us for those topics and it is it is indeed very interesting because for me if you ask me honestly from a security perspective controlling access is very important doesn't matter which domain of security you work for so even if you're working for a person who is actually assessing the application security right what exactly you're trying to do you're trying to protect any unauthorized access if you're trying to implement encryption what exactly you're trying to do you're trying to protect unauthorized access if you're using any kind of controls over the network like your firewall your those kind of things what exactly you're trying to do we are trying to protect any kind of unauthorized access so overall if you look look into all the domains of security that we talk about it boils down to main important concept where we want to protect any unauthorized access to our systems or assets okay so important interesting domain that we would want to understand it has two modules module one is going to talk about managing identity and authentication right and module two is going to talk about controlling and monitoring access so here we're going to learn about various access control model like your role based access control attribute based access control mandatory access control and many more okay let's quickly start with module one that is managing identity and authentication first thing we need to understand controlling access to the assets okay now assets could be anything assets could be anything so it could be either your information so information could be like your data your file servers your system which is uh, holding that data they all need to be protected as a part of your assets okay any systems now systems are something which is used to either store or process those sensitive data right so we need to make sure that those systems or servers or the databases they all have to be properly protected against any kind of unauthorized access then you have devices now devices refers to any kind of system which are needed to access any data right so it could be your computers laptops notebooks tablets smartphones or any kind of devices even like your printers they all need to be protected because these devices and we have understood the concerns on the devices like your byod bring your own devices they all have their several concerns so it is very important that we protect such devices against unauthor unauthorized access right or even we want to make sure that devices are controlled properly so that they do not end up accessing something some important data which is not authorized then facilities your facilities where it is a physical location your premises where people uh, work where your actually data is physically located right so it could be your buildings it, it could be any kind of a premises or anything that needs to be protected so any kind of physical access control so go back to the domain three last module physical security gates fences lights doors cables locks all the things alarm system intrusion detection system all those things that we read could be used as your physical security control then personal are the people who work for you they are the most important assets that you need to protect so just in case if someone who is working for you and the person is traveling so you might want to offer protection for them in case they are they do not have their own vehicle you might want to get their office uh, transport system should be there and in case they are traveling on their own make sure that they do not travel in the dark and those kind of things it is very important that we protect our personal assets all right then we have the concept of subject and the objects now who all are the subjects now subject is an entity which access any object so let's say we have a user right he wants to access any computer system now in this case it would be our subject this would be our object let's say this application server access any database right in that case it would become a subject it would become an object okay so uh, only authorized subject should be able to access the objects now what is an object object is an entity which provides information to the subject so in this case this was an object and in this case this was an object okay another fundamental of our protecting the security of the information is our ensuring we have a proper identification and authentication authorization process so what exactly identification is it is a process of uh, any subject subject it means the 
entity which wants to access any data they need to so they need to provide some kind of identity right some kind of identification so it is a claim that they are making that i am prashant that is my identity right authentication is verifying that claim you need to provide additional proof that prove us your prashant whatever the identity you have provided you need to prove it right so the common forms of authentication is your passwords that you use in order to get into the system so authentication could be it could be either yes or no when outcome of authentication what would be the there is outcome it would be it would be either yes or no right these are the only possible outcomes whether you would be authenticated to the system or you're not but authorization is not just like black and white it's not just like yes and no it's not it is way much granular so authorization means once you're inside the system let's say once you have qualified or check check this yes part and you come to the next part once you're inside this system it doesn't mean that it you can go ahead and do anything right there are certain set of privileges that is needed for you to uh, that is given to you that you need to understand uh, that you need to know and those are the things that you get access to based on the principle of your need to know and least privilege okay now once a particular subject is inside they have authorized it is very important that a system should be capable of capturing logs so just in case we have any kind of activities or any kind of incidents or even that has happened it should be able to capture it right and why exactly we need to capture it because so that we can actually hold someone accountable and accountability can only happen if we have the unique identity okay if the identity identity is not unique it is going to be very difficult to hold anyone accountable okay so anyone who has a unique identity and they are able to prove like they are able to prove their authentication we can hold anyone accountable okay so this is a quick explanation of what we discussed just uh, right now identification use user should be uniquely identified authentication validation of an entity's identity claim so whatever the claim that i'm making i should be able to prove it authorization it is confirms that an authenticated entity has the privileges and the permission permissions necessary auditing means any activity in the application system should be audited okay identifying any kind of technical issues or any kind of breaches and accountability is tracing an action to a subject so for accountability identity and authentication identification and authentication is must but not authorization right because you are able to identify the person only when the subject has been successfully identified and authenticated to the system right that is where you would be able to hold someone accountable someone or a subject should was able to get inside the application okay all right now this is where we were we were we have been talking about multi-factor authentication of various forms of uh, types of authentication this is where we are going to talk about authentication types or sometimes it is also called as factors of authentication right so what are the various factors now type one type one is something you know what are the things that you can remember that for which you have knowledge it could be your password it could be a pin it could be any pattern or it could be any passphrase anything something which for which you have knowledge you possess the knowledge type 2 is something you have okay so something a kind of a physical device or a physical entity that you can you're carrying with you like your smart card or your tokens they all are the examples of your type 2 authentication then we have type 3 type 3 is a characteristic that you possess like your biometric your physical or the vital states like your fingerprint scan your facial recognition your voice recognition your palm scan even like whenever you're going to take your CISSP exam before you take the CISSP exam the proctor is going to ask will is going to ask you to do a palm scan right and each and every time you leave your seat for small breaks like drinking water or having some food or some whatever the reason is you have to scan your palms and the moment you're going to come back after that break again you have to scan your palms okay so that is one of the biometric authentication that is that so it talks about the physical traits another type is type 4 not commonly and oftenly discussed but it is again important one that we need to understand it is somewhere you are so somewhere you are is like your location so it actually tracks the ip addresses or even the like callback feature callback feature that we learned in our previous domain right so that is again one of the form of authentication where it says somewhere you are 
or even like the system that you have been asking from uh, accessing with an IP address of let's say Canada, right? Suddenly your ID like you were able to provide your credentials and everything but your IP address started reflecting from another part of the world like let's say Indonesia. Okay, the system if it has type 4 authentication, it won't allow you to access it. All right, so that is your type 4. Now if you are going to use one of these factors any one of these even if you are just using biometric just biometric. Okay, if we are using just one factor it is going to be called as one factor authentication. If we are using a combination of two or more factors it is called as multi factor authentication. Okay. In case if you're using two factors, then it is going to be said as two factor authentication. In case if you're using three factors, then it is going to say three factors of authentication and so on. Okay, so this is just a uh, general statement that the passwords are not stored in a clear text. It is hashed, right? Either either encrypted or hashed and uh, using few, uh, hashing algorithm like password based key derivation function too. Okay, so not necessarily that you need to remember the particular algorithm. It is not needed for you to understand. Just a common uh, thing that you need to know is you never ever store your passwords in your clear text. All right important thing from your biometric pers perspective or your type 3 perspective that you have retina scans. Okay now retina scans are the most accurate form of biometric scans most accurate. However, it doesn't it is not acceptable. Why exactly retina scans are most accurate because it scans the blood vessel behind the eyes which is unique. Right. However, it is not acceptable because by scanning those blood vessels, it is going to reveal the health condition of the person like blood pressure, pregnancy or any other kind of medical. Now in order to protect that because it contains the health information PHI details. That is the reason it is not recommended. Whereas iris scan most of the eye scans that are done uh, are done on the iris, right? So iris is the area of your eye. Okay, that is the second best and mostly accepted form of authentication. Okay, now passwords now passwords are the most weakest form of authentication weakest still it is heavily used. It is still the most commonly used form of authentication even after it is considered as the most weakest one. Why? Why? Because it is easy and people have been using it from past several decades, right? People are used to the passwords. So for the generation we are talking about like someone who is 50 plus of years of age and uh, or probably more than that they have been using the password so often for a very long time and if you want to change of something which is like uh, a different form of authentication it might seems little complicated for them right so that is the reason it is easy it is very less expensive easy to get it configured and people have been using they're used to everybody is used to using the password Right now a common thing that I've written here is that like your passwords are like your toothbrush do not share it with anyone and keep changing in timely manner. That is very important and these are the necessary attributes that you might want to implement in your passwords. Okay, and how do we actually create a strong password? Okay, strong password is said when it it has this complicated. So when we say complicated means it includes the combination of your uppercase your lowercase your numbers and your special characters. Okay, and it has to be randomly generated maximum age. So it is very important that you actually change your passwords often. Okay, length of the password is very important as important as we wanted to discuss about the length of the key, right? Lengthier your password lengthier it is it is going to be more difficult for user to compromise considering if they implement attack like your brute force attack. Okay, history history means whatever the password that you have used it should not be repeated. So there you you must have seen that there are systems which doesn't allow any last or previous 10 passwords. Okay, then we have password phrase or we also call it as pass phrase. Now what is the password phrase? So generating a lengthier password is, is one of the requirements. Now what if your password would be how much of length? What do you think it could be of your eight characters or your 12 characters, right? which is considered as decent trust me 12 character password is absolutely decent it is it is very secure but choosing a 12 character password is like you need to think of a longer word or a longer something so just to help you with that we can use a password phrase now password phrase is something which is a phrase or a sentence that you might want to use it as your password like uh, i will pass my cissp 
exam it is lengthy right and you might want to replace like your cissp could have could be replaced with c1 dollar dollar p it in, it ma meets all the criteria of number special characters and you might want to use p as your small characters okay then we have cognitive passwords now what are the cognitive passwords these are the another password mechanisms where you want to provide the password which is based on the previous knowledge that user has kept so let's say you always whenever you register for any account it is it is asked there that what was your first school or first college project okay or favorite sport right these are the things that is predetermined at the time of registration and there you might want to use it just in case if you have forgotten your past uh, your credentials and you might want to access it using this it could be done okay well with this we complete our domain 5 that is identity and access management 